Hey, guess what? It's still Moomin time. Here they are, for one and all. It's the Moomins, everyone. This friendly family residing in perhaps the loveliest valley of all. Always ready to welcome whoever comes along. Their stories have been told throughout the ages in several different formats, including the latest Moomin Valley adaptation, which is the subject of this video. The show tends to focus on Moomin Troll, son of Moomin's both Papa and Mama, who spent the greatest part of Season 1 trying to assert his independence. We have followed him as he tried to come out of his shell, speak his own mind, and eventually go out on his own adventures. In Season 2, Moomin Troll continues to become more and more self-assured as he helps his friends and family, tries to make it on his own, and builds a new life in a distant island, learning to deal with change and the nature of love. In an astounding display of bravery, we see him confront his deepest fears and come out of it stronger and freer than ever. Now he is finally ready to set off on his own and explore the world. However, Moomin Troll isn't the only character in this story. Even though the spotlight is usually shining upon him, we also get to follow the lives of his family and friends, who can shape the world of the series just as much as our protagonist does. Which finally leads us to Snufkin, who is an essential piece of this universe and whose journey is so intrinsically tied to Moomin Trolls that speaking of one without mentioning the other would only lead us to conclusions that are far from complete, a fact that is made extremely clear by the show's second season. In Season 1, when we examine Snufkin's plotlines, we see that he is a free spirit who likes to travel, staying in Moomin Valley for most of the year but leaving every winter, only returning with the arrival of spring. He is very comfortable with this unattached lifestyle, to the point of earning the admiration of several creatures he has encountered in his path, including his best friend Moomin Troll. Snufkin doesn't always know how to deal with this sort of adoration, but it is easy to see that he enjoys Moomin Troll's company after all, constantly teaming up with him to go hiking, fishing, adventuring, or just chatting. He understands that Moomin Troll misses him when he's gone, and knows his friend would rather stay close all year, but Snufkin still won't let that stop him from coming and going as he feels like. He is very fond of nature and freedom, and believes that nothing should be caged up, including himself. Hence why he is so keen on leaving. He usually keeps to himself and follows his own principles, but that also tends to stop him from seeing when he's being closed off to the point of pushing other people away. And although he values his own independence, he also struggles with the idea that he might grow so distant from the people he loves that they'll just end up forgetting him altogether. Therefore, Snufkin must learn to let other people in, allowing himself to be loved and finding a better balance between enjoying other people's company and keeping his own freedom. And little does he know, his own journey might be more tied to Moomin Trolls than he realizes. What do I mean by that? Let's find out together! Because, once again, I want to talk about Moomin Valley. From the very start, the creators of this series defined it as a seasonal show, meaning that not only the episodes have a greater sense of continuity than what had already been seen in other adaptations, but also the progress of time is very clear, as we explore the seasons that fit within a year of the characters' lives. Season 1 started as winter faded to spring, and ended as autumn had completely changed into winter. With that said, Season 2 follows the same tradition, starting off with the very beginning of spring, back when the snow hasn't all quite melted away and the valley is only now starting to come back to life. The end of winter means two things in this reality. One, the Moomin family wakes up from hibernation. And two, Snufkin comes back from his yearly travels. Season 1 had already shown us that the Wanderer's return doesn't really have a set date and only happens when he feels like it, which is also Snufkin's posture towards most things in life. During the Spring Tune episode, for example, 
we see that he was taking a bit longer to come back simply because he didn't feel ready to head towards the valley just yet. He values his time alone and even uses it to fuel his creativity. In Season 2, on the other hand, we discover that Snufkin's delay this time was due to him stopping to help out a fire spirit he encountered in his travels. With the upcoming eruption, Snufkin agrees to take the creature to the volcano it had been trying to reach, even if it means he will take longer to reach the valley himself. Little did he know, however, that Moomintroll and his friends were coming to search for him, as they were worried he wouldn't make it back before disaster struck. He is glad to see them, though he doesn't see why they should worry so much, and they all agree to accompany him. As they reach the end of their journey, Snark Maiden argues that this is a big moment, and that Snufkin should say a few words before letting the spirit go. He seems to struggle with the concept, and all he manages to say is... You're home now. Off you go. And with that, the spirit goes home. The rush of trying to reach the valley before the eruption takes over as we follow the gang back to the Moomin house and then towards the boat they will use to escape. During this process, Moomin Troll feels quite upset over having to move, but Snufkin doesn't seem particularly affected. That is, until the spirit moves the eruption away from the valley as thanks for the help which not only saves the house, but also provides the family with a true spectacle of nature, as thousands of sprites shoot through the sky and land into the ocean, including the very spirit that Snufkin had met, which waves him one last goodbye. All is well, and our characters are able to go back to their normal lives. Except Snufkin was more affected by this whole journey than one might expect. Not only did he find himself crying as he saw the spirit for the last time, but he also doesn't feel quite ready to let go just yet, lingering over the back of the boat as everyone else leaves. It is Moomin Troll who has to snap him out of it, offering him a friendly hand. Several things about this episode are surprising. For starters, the fact that Snufkin goes so out of his way to help the spirit is not what one might expect from him, given his past track record. Even though he is admired by several creatures, he doesn't usually deviate from his own journeys in order to help them out of his own volition. When he first meets T.D. Wu in Season 1, on one hand, he would much rather not have to talk to the creature, because he wasn't done enjoying his lonely traveling time. On the other hand, you could say that he instead befriended the spirit because it was helpless. But so were the woodies who liberated from the park on the previous season, and he also wasn't so fond of them at first. I don't even know if I like them. He does learn to befriend those creatures eventually, but his initial reaction towards them is rather cold. As for the spirit, however, he actually seems rather taken by it going out of his way to bring it home and then finding himself unable to say goodbye. For a guy who's built quite the reputation over not having strong attachments, he seems pretty shaken. Helping the spirit also meant helping bring forth the eruption, which would eventually destroy the valley. Snufkin isn't very bothered by that fact, which is unsurprising, because he has always been good at dealing with both change and the inevitable. What really takes him aback, however, is the fact that the spirit convinces the other ones of moving the eruption away, which ends up saving everyone's home. To this, Snufkin remarks that kindness spreads like wildfire. The spirit didn't need to help them, but did it to repay their favor. Helping the creature reach the volcano had its perils, but was overall not that hard a task. Except, for the spirit, it meant everything which is why it felt like such a grand thank you gesture, like altering the course of nature itself, was the only thing that could make up for the gang's troubles. The spirit moved the eruption because it had been shown kindness. It was cared for, which made it want to care for others. If it hadn't shown its own vulnerability, it wouldn't have received the help that it needed. Except this process goes both ways. By helping out the spirit, Snufkin was also letting himself be known, in a way. He bonded with the creature, which is how he gained its gratitude. By helping others, Snufkin was helped in return. 
and this whole realization got to him maybe a little bit more than he was expecting. The parallels between Moomin Troll and the Fire Spirit are also worth noticing. Not only through Moomin Troll's perspective, as he views the spirit as someone who might potentially take his place, but also through Snufkin's own vision, because the Fire Spirit is characterized by having a home. When they reach the volcano, Snufkin must part with the sprite, and they both seem equally upset to see each other go. But Snufkin must carry on with his journey, and the spirit has to stay where it belongs. Saying goodbye in situations like this is something that Snufkin is pretty used to, because he has to do it every time he leaves the valley. But we have never seen him this moved by it before which makes you wonder how he truly feels when leaving Moomin Troll behind too. By bonding with the spirit, he was also helped by it, as the creature changed the very course of nature just for its friends. However, he was also helped by Moomin Troll, who offered him a friendly hand as he lingered in the back of the boat, and Snufkin hesitates before actually accepting it. To him, any sort of helping gesture feels like a mortifying feat of nature. Snufkin has experienced what it truly feels like to let himself be known and helped, and the effects of sharing kindness are, to him, pretty overwhelming. Except, this sort of vulnerability is the opposite of what he is used to showing, and it remains just as terrifying. The characters seem to go through a sequence of peaceful days after that whole natural disaster thing, and they get to carry on with their regular lives. Snufkin continues to hang out with Moomin Troll, as is usual for the pair, and he even sets up camp closer to the Moomin House this time. However, these quiet times are interrupted by the discovery of a mysterious hat, which Moomin Troll originally offers to his father as a gift, but later just turns into a wastebasket, because it was pretty big for their heads. From the very start, Snufkin is somewhat distrustful of the hat. When Moomin Troll asks if he would like to try it on, he refuses, saying that it's much too new for him. When the characters wonder what they should do with a hat that fits none of their heads, Snufkin passionately rants about how they should dispose of it immediately. Shortly after, he goes off on his own journey, saying that he needs to learn more about this strange object. When he returns, he tells Moomin Troll about his findings. The hat apparently belongs to an all-powerful magician known as the Hobgoblin, who lives on top of a mountain and spends his days endlessly searching the universe for rubies. Snufkin claims that he will never be satisfied until he finds the King's Ruby, the most stunning, dazzling jewel of them all. Moomin Troll is quite impressed by this tale, and the friends share their thoughts. He must really love that ruby. He wants to possess it. There is a difference. This conversation highlights what remains Snufkin's biggest grievance. To him, wanting to possess something is actually the opposite of love. He values freedom most of all, and despises the idea of being trapped. Someone who wants to claim a beautiful thing as their own is, in his own worldview, the very definition of a villain. Since the Hobgoblin owns the hat, chances are he'll come back to the valley in search of it, prompting the two friends to hide it inside of a cave so it can be never found again. This seems to take care of the problem for now, but Moomin Troll wonders what will happen once the wizard comes searching for it. To which Snufkin replies that he is sure his friend will figure something out on his own, since he is leaving the valley. Snufkin says he has a plan, but it's a lonely one. He will leave now, despite it being only summer, but he reassures Moomin Troll that he will be back when spring comes along. And with that, he vanishes into the woods. We never find out what Snufkin's plan is. You could assume he meant it was a plan to defeat the Hobgoblin, or to just keep the valley safe in general. But if that's the case, then they never really needed Snufkin's plan at all, because the Moomin family actually manages to solve the problem within a few days, and they do so with justice and empathy. Turns out that the King's Ruby had been taken by two strange guests that arrive at the Moomin house, known as Thingummy and Bob. 
To make matters more complicated, however, they apparently stole it from the Grok, who is now determined to grab it back. And in order to see who gets to keep the stone, the Moomin family sets up a trial where each creature gets to defend their claim. This process is interrupted by both Sniff breaking the ruby and by the Hobgoblin's arrival, who is furious that he can no longer take the stone for himself and curses Sniff in retaliation by giving him empathy. Sniff is now really high on that empathy juice and starts rambling about what makes every member of the Moomin family so special, and he even apologizes to the Hobgoblin which, in turn, makes him realize his obsession has gotten way out of hand and he throws everyone a party. Here, we see a great facet of what makes the Moomin family so lovable. When faced with the problem of who owns the ruby, they decide to sort it out with kindness and patience, giving all parties involved a chance to speak their minds and resolve the issue in a fair manner. Even as the Hobgoblin threatens them, it is by showing the wizard the same feeling and caring that makes him snap out of his rampage. And it turns out that he is actually a pretty chill guy. He just let himself get carried away. Once again, the same lesson that Snufkin learned with the fire spirit makes itself present. Being kind and letting yourself be helped can lead to powerful solutions, even to the most overwhelming of problems. The Hobgoblin, who so far had presented himself as an all-powerful threat, is won over by simple acts of empathy, and he even throws the gang a party in order to make up for their troubles. Snufkin, however, isn't there to see any of it, because he left. If he had fled in search of a solution to the Hobgoblin issue, his journey would now be useless, because the villain has already been dealt with and turns out to be way less terrible than he had once seemed. The problem is, however, that Snufkin never said he was leaving in order to defeat the Hobgoblin. All he said was that he had a plan and that it was a lonely one. The true intentions of this plan remain unknown. We can assume the wizard had something to do with it because Snufkin seemed fine with staying until he learned of the hat's owner, but the true nature behind his intentions remains unstated. So, what would make him so troubled to the point of leaving? When Snufkin shares his findings over the Hobgoblin, he characterizes the man as an all-powerful wizard, lost in a possessive craze. When telling Moomin Troll about this, Snufkin illustrates his story with the sparks from the campfire, and in order to represent the wizard acquiring his rubies, he hides some of the sparks with the shadow of his fists, causing their light to fade away. This is what he believes will happen to things who are captured. The glow they were once admired for will disappear, leaving nothing but darkness behind them. Moomintrol argues that the Hobgoblin must really love the ruby, but Snufkin says he only wants to possess it. That is what makes the wizard so dangerous. To Snufkin, the Hobgoblin represents the very idea of possessiveness, and to him, that is the biggest threat there is. So, he leaves. When his friend asks what they will do if the wizard ever comes along, Snufkin says that he's sure that Moomintrol will figure something out, and he says it so calmly that it almost seems like defeating this all-powerful being isn't even that hard a task. But he is not going to be there to see it. Snufkin appears to be leaving simply because he doesn't want to be the one to deal with it. This isn't the first time that he has left just because he was feeling uncomfortable. Season 1 brings us plenty of examples of Snufkin doing just that. During the Park Keeper episode, for instance, he even states that the reason why he left was because he was starting to feel enclosed. This time, it seems no different. The freedom to come and go as he pleases is one of the aspects that Snufkin values the most about his lifestyle, and that doesn't seem to be something that's about to change. When he states he has a plan, he also says it's a lonely one because being alone is the only way in which he can deal with the feeling of becoming trapped. However, he isn't the only one who tries to move away from his troubles this season, because that's exactly what the Moomin family does when they leave the valley. 
This decision was mostly made by Moom and Papa, but every other family member also has their share of troubles to avoid. In the case of Moom and Sho, these problems take the shape of the Grok, a terrible monster who represents not only his biggest fears, but also his darkest tendencies. As he tried to establish a new life on the island, he was still haunted by this terrifying presence, and the only way to make it go away was to confront it, thus facing the parts of himself that he also needed to come to terms with. Snufkin doesn't feel as haunted by the Hobgoblin as Moomin Troll does by the Grok, or if he feels that way, he doesn't let it show. He speaks of the wizard like he's easy to defeat, despite how powerful he is, but he still doesn't want to go through that kind of trouble himself. It could also be that the Hobgoblin was just a scapegoat for Snufkin's growing feelings of becoming enclosed, and was overall just a convenient reason to set off again. The fact remains, however, that both Moomintrol and Snufkin have a figure that represents something they antagonize, and that they both try to get away from. For Moomintrol, the Grok represents his own issues with loving in a way that grants no freedom, and also with chasing something dear with a yearning so intense it only pushes away the very thing it tries to keep. By confronting this fear, he realizes the dangers of being so emotionally possessive, and learns to love with an open hand. He is now free to come and go as he pleases, knowing that his loved ones still care for him and support his journey no matter where he is, even if they miss him. And as winter arrives, he sets off on his journey, ready to explore the world on his own. But Snufkin has yet to defeat his own fears. Which leads us to November. As autumn progresses, Snufkin puts more and more distance between himself and the valley. We haven't seen him since summer, and we have no way of knowing what he's been up to, but you can see that he plans to carry on with leaving. He thinks back to Moomintrol, and how his friend always misses him, and how his family tries to comfort him as they prepare for hibernation, just like every year. This time, however, he runs into Sniff and Snorkmaiden, who suggest that something has happened to Moomintrol. Because Snufkin has been away, he hasn't heard the news regarding the Moomin family. He rushes back to the house, surprised not to see Moomintrol's ladder hanging from the window, and he meets several other characters who are just as shocked as he is with how the family left without saying goodbye. Snufkin is a bit of a specialist in both leaving and the Moomins, and argues that they will be back soon, welcoming the people into the house. They are soon joined by Toffle, who spends their days dreaming about meeting the Moomins, and they all stay in the house waiting for them to come back. Snufkin is convinced that Moomintrol left him a note, which the others encourage him to search for, because it might tell them when the family plans on coming back. The more he looks for it, however, the clearer it becomes that the Moomins really left no messages behind, and the possibility of their return continues to grow uncertain. Even if the house sitters try to get along, what they really want is for the family to come back, and tensions start to grow. Toffel becomes obsessed with a type of creature known as the Numulite, which starts as a figure he's read about in a book, but soon becomes an ever-growing monster threatening to destroy the entire house and all of those that live in it. Their fear spreads to the others, and soon they are all convinced that they are about to be eaten. But Snufkin isn't so easily swayed, and argues that they must do as the Moomins would and welcome the beast inside. And it turns out that this monster was just winter itself, seen through the terrified eyes of loneliness. The characters realize it's time to leave the house behind and carry on with their lives, and Snufkin decides to try to leave the valley once more, while Toffel prefers to head to the beach. While walking away, though, Snufkin hears them yelling out for him, telling him that the Moomins have returned, to which Snufkin rushes to the sea in order to meet them. Snufkin had initially tried to leave the valley in order to escape the Hobgoblin, or at least what the wizard represented. 
He hates the idea of being possessed, and anyone who actively engages in trapping things is seen as a villain by him. Like Moomin Troll, he had a problem he was trying to run away from. But unlike his friend, he didn't feel endlessly haunted by this monster. Toffle's conviction of being hunted down by Numulites, on the other hand, resembles Moomin Troll's terrors a lot more closely. But while the Moomin family seems oblivious to the monster's presence, the new house sitters grow just as terrified of the creature. Snufkin, however, remains relatively unshaken. But this time, instead of leaving, he argues that they should do what the Moomins would do and welcome the monster. Which actually echoes what they tried to do with the Grok earlier in the season, so Snufkin is being pretty accurate. By opening the door, however, he showed that the beast was really just winter, a time characterized by the Moomins going into hibernation and by Snufkin leaving. The season is, by definition, a time of loneliness, and represents Snufkin's tendencies to leave and to keep other people out of his life. And even though that is what he had been initially trying to do, it is the exact opposite of his behavior as the days turned colder. By welcoming the guests into the Moomin house, he became their guide. And out of all of them, he was the warmest towards Toffel. Instead of the unattached, free-spirited wanderer, we are met with a caring and sheltering host. As for the rest of the November episode, the events I have described barely feel like a Snufkin adventure. Instead, it feels like something Moomin Troll would do. The wandering, the longing, the growing anticipation, and the relentless hope for reunion are all things that characterize Moomin Troll's process of waiting for Snufkin to return with spring. Except this time, it's Snufkin who stays up until late at night, waiting for his friend by the bridge, and who wonders what is taking him so long to come back. Snufkin seems convinced that Moomin Troll left him a note, but that's not something we have ever seen Moomin Troll do. Instead, it is Snufkin who tends to write Moomin Troll a letter telling him of his plans, and when Snufkin hears that his friend might have returned, he rushes in to meet him, desperate to see him again. Winter, which has one friend leaving and the other wishing they would come back, still brings those very same figures. But now, it is Moomin Troll who leaves, and Snufkin who stays behind. Moomin Troll needed to learn to love with an open hand. Otherwise, he would never let Snufkin and himself live and grow, and would only end up pushing his friend away. In order to learn his lesson, he learned to be independent, unattached and free. In other words, to be more like Snufkin. Meanwhile, Snufkin needed to learn to let people in and to let himself be loved. Only then he would be able to overcome his fear of being forgotten. Throughout Season 2, he has allowed himself to be known, to be vulnerable and to be helped, though he still struggled with the idea of being possessed. Even though this monster didn't haunt him, he still tried to flee from it, until he found himself being loving and welcoming which allowed him to stand his ground and let the beast inside, only to realize it was no monster at all. When the Moomins were planning to leave the valley, Moomin Mama claimed that sometimes a life that is too good can actually make you restless, and that you must change things up a bit before you start taking them for granted. Despite his ease in dealing with change, Snufkin has always seen the Moomin Valley, and thus its inhabitants, as something that is constant and everlasting. It was a place he could always return to, and that would always welcome him back. There was no trouble to it, it would always be there for him. He had started to take it for granted. It is only when that is taken away from him, that he realizes how much he had relied on it and how much he yearns for the comfort that came from being cared for. During the November episode, he finds himself longing for the return of the one who would always be there for him, craving to be loved and welcomed. Snufkin learned to be more like Moomin Troll. 
We have followed these characters throughout two years, and we have seen them grow together and learn from each other. The very things that Moomin Troll admired in Snufkin are now what drive him forward, and the very love that Snufkin had been shown by Moomin Troll all his life is now what taught him how to let other people in. What could their reunion bring us? Again, only time will tell. And season 3, which I eagerly await. But even though Snufkin struggled to let himself be loved, Moomin Troll never had to struggle to love him. Thank you for watching. Well, hello there. It was very nice of you to watch this video. If you have enjoyed the video, you can do those cool things such as clicking the like button, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell too. You can also follow me on Twitter and share this video with your friends. Feel free to leave a comment down below, especially if it is about how much you love Snufkin. I'm not quite done talking about Moomin Valley just yet, mostly because I will never be done talking about the Moomins. So if you like that kind of content, you can go to my other videos on the subject, and maybe check out the rest of my videos as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! I don't even know what to say, like, at the end of this video. I just really love Snufkin so much.